Hello everyone, this is a replay of my round 5 match of the Metroid Prime Randomizer 2023 tournament, originally broadcasted on Speed Gaming. Thank you to Speed Gaming for hosting myself, the tournament, and the many other events and races that are ongoing. Please show your support to Speed Gaming at both twitch.tv slash speedgaming and youtube.com slash at speedgaming channel. Thank you. Alright. A good day to you folks. Welcome to Speed Gaming. We bring you our next race in the Metroid Prime Randomizer 2023 tournament. And this is a great one, folks. We've got Bash Prime versus Jeff Gaines in games. I am Captain ND, and tonight I am joined by Torvis Bog. How you doing? Very well. How are we doing? Fantastic. I'm really intrigued about how this week is going to plan out because we have uh, what this setting is, is open world major minor split. So... Why don't you uh, tell us, uh, Taurus Bog, what that entails for our runners this week? So as far as the open world setting goes, it means that all doors in the game are changed to blue, which means uh, you're free to go anywhere that you can get to the door. Uh, majors and minors means that our major items are, that's our uh, main items, and I believe power bomb expansions are swapped separately from our minor items. Uh, I'm not sure about power ex power bomb expansions. I believe artifacts are considered majors. Artifacts are uh, e tanks aren't. But yeah, so that means now uh, we should note that we are starting with charge beam this time around. Our runners did RA to start with charge beam, uh, vanilla suit damage reduction, and no exo skip allowed. And we've seen exo skip be a big deal already just earlier today. So it'll be interesting to see how our runners deal with uh, not having that uh, feature, not having the ability to perform that. Yes, it was interesting as I was thinking about it. Because of all doors being blue, Plasma Beam is not required for um, anything aside from Exosuit and a few checks. Right. You also need Plasma Beam to get down to OP because of the uh, iced switch in front of the door. There's a couple of select cases. But for the most part, yes, beams become much less of an issue than they were before. That being said, because we have major minor split, there only can be a select few locations where there actually can be progression. This includes Tower of Light, Tower Chamber, Ruined Shrine, uh, Lava Lake, uh control tower every place any place that had a major item a beam combo or an artifact pretty much uh that being said our runners have just uh gotten the green light in the race time room so we'll be kicking off in just a second uh torvis bog what do you want to see in this seed tonight uh, some unfortunate power bomb placements um I want main power bombs at the top of Dynamo. Main power bombs, uh, that can't happen, I don't think, since there isn't usually a major item there. Oh, right. Major items. Um. As, uh, as for me, I don't know. Stuff in Lower Mines is pretty common here. Tower of Light's gonna probably have progression, so I would say... Ooh, this is a tough call. I'm not sure what I want to see. I think we'll find out as we go. We're going to probably see trash artifacts, though. Here's hoping. Now, there should be seven nothings in this pool, so seven of those major locations will not have anything, uh, since we still only have six artifacts and starting with charge beam. And it looks like our first item is the Missile Launcher. Now, I would say normally that gives us Artifact Hints, but we already had access to Artifact Hints since the doors were open already. Any particular favorites for artifacts? I would love to see, um, I think, I think it'd be fun to see Flagra, so Sun Tower, 
or not Sun Tower, Sun Chamber. Uh, you might get your wish. There's a good chance uh, with the major minor split, it's going to have something. It's like various suit and artifact temple. That's pretty good. That is uh, some Magmore access. Uh, nice and early, but can we do anything in particular over there? Not really. We're still kind of missing Morph Ball. And it looks like we're not going to see our hints right away. We tend to not see hints uh, by some of the veteran runners. They won't check their hints until there's the ability to diverge a little bit. Right now, it's clear that the next uh, port of call is still to go straight to, um, to main plaza. Jeff, however, will be giving us our artifacts. And today, our artifacts are Tower of Light. Not a shock at all. Storage Depot B. Eh. Control tower, not the worst, could be worse, could be better. Gravity chamber, that's lower for sure. Sun chamber, there you go, and chapel of the elders. All right, so lower gravity chamber is guaranteed an artifact. Ew. That's... Gravity Chamber is probably the messiest one. Other than that, these artifacts are actually pretty tame. Hopefully we'll see a uh, Gravity Suitless escape. We could do. And interestingly, Bass choosing to go for Ruin Shrine first and gets Grapple. Now getting out is going to be easier than getting in. And that being said, Bash just made that look completely easy. I think without Space Jump, it is a little bit useful for now. It just gets you an extra item in Main Plaza nice and early. I see Energy Tank in um, the Half Pipe. It can't be anything important. That's another Energy Tank in uh, Grapple Ledge. Everything else in Main Plaza is pretty much a minor item, so we won't be seeing anything else important here. For now, though, not going to be seeing a whole lot of difference in routing from our runners. As Bash going to be the first to make his way to Hive Totem after being pestered by bees. Space jumps in uh, Hive Mecca. All right, so we've got early space jump, early various suit, but no morph ball, which is a bit concerning. I'm trying to think where else um, where else we have access to in Chozo that could be a major, and the only thing that immediately comes to mind is Tower Chamber. Yeah, Pira. Here, hit the nail on the head there, because we can just scan dash right on over. Um, although, I think underwater slope jump for tower chamber is not in logic. Um, is root cave in logic? Or uh, is it root, the root cave, the only thing we're looking for logically is x-ray visor, but we could get there. Otherwise, uh, our runners don't need to concern themselves too much with x-ray visor. Looks like that what might be Bash Prime is doing. Um, well, also, Root Cave's not a major location, so... Oh, right. That being said, I'm trying to think... We also have Magmore access, so it could be Lava Lake, Warrior Shrine. 
Uh, Lava Lake seems like the obvious one. Um, Warrior Shrine, we could, uh, we can't get to there from Lava Lake. We have to go from Fiery Shores. So yeah, it looks like we're gonna kinda have to do a little back and forth here as we kick things off. Cause either way, you're not gonna be able to go from Fiery Shores to Lava Lake. Uh, since you would need both Morph Ball and an explosive weapon. So you need either Morph Ball plus either bombs or main power bombs, which we just don't, we're just not gonna get cause we only have one spot. We are seeing that, uh, Tower of Light and Tower Chamber play from uh, Jeff. But yeah, I would say these artifacts for the most part are actually pretty benign. The only one that's really a minor pain in the backside is Gravity Chamber. But yeah, I, I was saying last week how, in my mind, the week four settings was more like a blitz setting, a light blitz setting with, um, with possibility of having so many items to start. But I'm wondering if this week might actually be uh, more so the, um, the blitz setting, um, the blitz setting in my mind. What do you think? Mm, as Bash almost kills himself. Ooh. Scary. Oh no! And as Bash actually killed himself, ouch. Uh, thankfully, it does look like he's safety saved recently, so. That... Where is this in? Is this in. Oh, this is in nur Nursery, so I think this is still after various suit and space jump, so. Not the most consequential time loss in the universe, but still a little painful. And here Jeff is getting to the artifact in Sun Tower. Alright, so that is Jeff's first artifact. Bash, um, not checking the tree yet. There's no point checking this in, um, in this setting. Is Jeff not checking, uh, Sun Tower Chamber? A Tower Chamber Jeff already checked. And, uh, it was nothing. Oh, okay. But it would seem that Bash is going to follow suit here and pick up, uh, his first artifact. So yeah, it looks like we're still unfortunately in this sort of back and forth chain for Ma between Magmore, and I think our next stop is going to actually be Lava Lake. I'm trying to think of what else we can do right now, and very little is coming to mind. Because we can't get to the Watery Hall area without Morph Ball. Um, there's Warrior Shrine, yeah, but and Bash couldn't check that earlier. So yeah, it's either Warrior Shrine or Lava Lake, or... Both. How does both sound to you, Torvis? <laughs> Sounds great. Because we're still missing our Morph Ball and any of our bombs, and that locks off um, part of Magmore. Yeah, I think what I find interesting is that, and, pro and a bit suffering-like, is that our runners are going to have to make a detour all the way around from Monitor Station back to Lava Lake through Chozo. Because, again, we're not going to see bombs and, ma uh, and Morph Ball in the same pass here. We also have access to uh, Bendrona Canyon, don't we? Uh, no. Oh, no, but not without Morph Ball. That's yeah, we, need, we just need Morph. We also need bombs. Uh, so once we get more Ball of Bombs, then yes, we can go to Canyon, and we could even go to Chapel. Uh, since we no longer need Wave Beam.
Jeff's gonna just make a quick pit stop for this missile tank. It is still a good idea to grab some extra missiles since there is still a good chance you might, you're gonna get like supers or ice spreader in some of the major locations you check. Now, one area of concern is that a lot of the early games, was that a black Notroid in um, Shore Tunnel? Didn't quite see it. I'm gonna take it another. Was. It was? Wow, that's a really nice Notroid <laughs> color. We saw that on Bash's pass through. Oh, we did, okay. Now, on that note, yeah, so if we find more Fallen Bombs, and there's more Fallen Warrior Shrine right there, so... Uh, yeah, this doesn't give us access to Canyon, unfortunately, because we need bombs. Uh, and we can't go from the other side, because we don't have a way to workstation yet. We need either Gravity Suit or Spider Ball. Now, an area of concern is that a lot of our artifacts are in the early game, which unfortunately means our major items are going to be in the later game. Because where are, where are our remaining artifacts? We've got Sun Chamber, Control Tower. Those are pretty early game locations, so that's two major locations knocked out, and we've already seen two Notroids out of seven. So... I don't know, Torvus, where do you think Phazon Suit's going to be hiding this time? Um, vanilla? <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with vanilla. I mean, to be fair, we have to go to mines anyway since we're going to Storage Depot B. And it looks like Jeff is going to sequence break workstation a little bit here. A Running a little... On house. Yeah, ultimately elects to abort. Um, if we find X-Ray, that would put Arbor Chamber in logic since that doesn't need Plasma Beam. I can't actually remember if Arbor Chamber's use is a vanilla, is an artifact in vanilla. I think... I don't think it is, actually. I think I might just be imagining things. Yeah, chat confirms I'm imagining things. And despite that death, Bash Prime has, uh... not lost too much time. In fact, there's only one room behind Jeff. Now, at this particular point in time, we do have a special um, announcement to make as well. Randovania version 6.0 has just dropped, uh, which does a lot of adds a lot of multi-world changes and echoes door lock rando. So if you enjoyed the prime rando door, uh, door lock rando you saw in week three, well, rejoice. You now have the ability to do so in echoes. Oh, super fun. And I believe it also includes a lot of updates to Dread Rando. In the meantime, really not much else to say. Uh, runners are just cruising on through to Main Plaza. And Bash actually, I think, uh, bunny, hopped, uh, bunny hopped his way ahead a little bit here. Because, yeah, you can kind of bunny hop to keep your sideways speed a little bit higher. Since Prime has no sideways speed cap. Oh, Jeff was indecisive about landing site. Okay. Looks like. Where is Bash going? Ah, uh, yes. Watery Hall and um, whatnot is. Oh, actually, no, wait. This is to Lava Lake. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have. Oh, we have the artifact there. Uh, Lava Lake, I can't remember if, is Lava Lake an artifact this time around? It's, it's a major, so it does have something. But Morph Ball should have allowed us access to Watery Hall as well, so that would have given us an item on Charge Beam. So, either bombs are here or they're in Watery Hall. Either way, one of our, one of our runners is about to find out. Bombs could also be on Soid. Um, we could have vanilla bombs, which would be hilarious.
Oh, plasma beam. Ooh, plasma beam. That's an interesting uh, spot to find it. It's not going to do us any good right this minute, but it is going to be a good combat bonus. Now, if this is bombs um, here in Watery Hall, uh, that may persuade uh, Jeff to go to Lava Lake, and it is bombs. All right, yeah, Plasma Beam, I think, deals with probably the most amount of checks that it could lock in open world. Because it locks out Elder Chamber, for example, and it locks out OP, which there's a very non-zero chance we'll have to go there anyway. So getting Plasma now is actually pretty good. But again, I don't think Jeff's going to put that off too long. Uh, chat brings up a good point. Chozo Ice Temple uh, becomes available to us now. Uh, with bombs and plasma. And without power bombs, it's going to make the uh, uh, Shigoth fight a bit easier. Yeah, we just need to find one first. But we're going to see Bash Prime make the uh, detour here to Watery Hall for bombs, and I would wager probably going to also go to Zoid. I think Zoid just blocked the... Uh... Yeah, Zoid is totally blocking the entrance. <laughs> Thanks, Zoid. Bomb expansions are not majors. No, they're not. But nevertheless, having a power bomb now is really nice because it'll do us a favor for like going to uh, Storage Depot B. I mean, I know we bring up Storage Depot B a lot, but uh, Lower Mines is also going to be a big deal if power bombs are particularly late to the party, which they could be. They could just be on Thardis or something. Nope, oh, and it looks like we're going to see Bash Prime make a quick detour to pick up this energy tank. Uh, which he will not say no to, given he was under 100 for a bit. Jeff, in the meantime, got a pretty decent Zoid. He's speeding. Ooh, I wonder if with this equipment in tow, you make the you make your way to Farchozo. Because there's an interesting... There's a problem with the logic right now in that the game still expects you to have Ice Beam for Elder Chamber. Um, and having that with Plasma Beam in, logically in tow already... Yeah, I'm actually very suspicious of Elder Chamber right now. Looks like Bash is not interested in going to Zoid right away, however. Either that or it's just opening things up for later. Also important to note, Jeff has not found Plasma Beam, so he probably isn't thinking about Elder Chamber yet. Very true. And it looks like Jeff is going to make the Flogger Ghosts play. We already know there's an artifact in here, but there could be another major item here. So yeah, of all the major locations, there are 10 that would be basically 10 total that would be useless slash mostly useless because there's also the three beam combos. Those are considered major items. 
And we've seen like two or three, like, like yeah, two or three Notroids. Yeah, Bash, Bash skipping Zoid is a very interesting play here. I'm not sure. I mean, we know it's not a good play because Ice Beam is back there, but I'm curious as to why Bash wouldn't just route that in now. Does Bash know Exoskip? Um, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, Exoskip is not allowed in the uh, runner's agreement for this race. We also have another check coming up in Antichamber. So I guess Bash was going for density more than anything. And indeed, there is Spider-Ball and Elder Chamber. That's actually pretty big. That is Workstation and Farfendrana access. Nice bomb jump series there. First, First try. Yep. All right, and antechamber is thermal visor. Sure, why not? Wait, plasma and thermal were in the exact same places as this morning. Is this even randomized? All right, and now we're seeing Bash head back to, um, through Furnace. I, this is probably the Zoid play. Because, yeah, at this point, there's no reason to go anywhere else. Because there's nothing, there's pretty much no major spots left in Talon. Besides the Life Grove area, which we can't get to because, um, Bash can't get to right now because... Uh, he's missing a power bomb and boost ball. Now, granted, boost is not strictly required, but the way to get to life grow without boost is quite dangerous. And it does seem that Bash is doubling back for Zoid here, which we know this is a very good call. Yeah, Jeff doesn't immediately gain an advantage here with that earlier Ice Beam. And uh, I could see that glowing a mile away. That is main power bombs on Flagra. Which means the artifact is on Ghosts. Now, in Jeff's case... This is going to be tough for him because uh, with no spider ball, uh, he would have to do early wild, which isn't particularly pleasant to do. Now, granted, he's got the health for it. Uh, Bash Prime, on the other hand, will have no trouble triggering uh, Ghost with spider ball. And it looks like we're going to see early wild. Almost had it, yeah. Bash finds his ice beam. Oh no, Jeff unmorphed no. too early and is past the column, and that go there goes the early wild for Jeff. Ooh, that's gonna be that's gonna be an unfortunate time loss for later. I think it's worth noting, Bash Prime does have the spider ball, so it's gonna make his early wild a lot easier. Indeed, and we and we did add, uh, bring mention to that a minute ago, too, so, yeah. I think uh, this does give Bash an edge for now, despite not getting Ice Beam right away, and two 
Bash's credit, Ice Beam hasn't been useful for anything else yet. Now, none of our artifacts were super locked, right? Yeah, no, they weren't. Unfortunately, because Bash Prime did pick up Thermal Visor and Antichamber, that makes this room more dangerous. Jeff finds the plasma beam. Looks like he's heading to Warrior Shrine, I think is what it's called. Uh, yep, this would be a Warrior Shrine play, and this would get... Uh, actually, no, Jeff has already been to Warrior Shrine, so this is actually probably a play to Fendrana. And, uh, to answer a question from chat, um why we refer to the incinerator drone as uh, Zoid. Uh, Zoid is the developer who programmed um, the incinerator drone and the uh, powerbomb maze in Central Dynamo. Um, retired semi-recently too. I want to say it was like two Novembers ago, somewhere along that line. And you're seeing how uh, space jump and bombs absolutely wreck this fight, because as it turns out, the bomb slots are not actually bomb slots. Oh, man, it looks like Bash couldn't quite get the bomb off. So Jeff's first stop is probably with Plasma and Toe gonna be yeah, it's gonna be Ice Temple and Chapel. That's two that's two checks here, so right now we are looking for Under ideal circumstances, we're looking for X-ray visor, wave beam, and phase on soon. I stress X-ray visor because there is again a fairly solid chance we have to go to OP. Um, we also could do with Gravity Suit, since we have an artifact in Lower Gravity Chamber. Now, Jeff has another problem here, is that with Spider Ball being in Elder Chamber... Oh, well, there's that Gravity Suit we were looking for. Um, with... Spider-Ball being in Elder Chamber, it's unlikely Jeff is going to head in that direction anytime soon. So that's going to... it's going to be a while, and Jeff also would now need Super Missiles for, um... for Ghosts. So this, this actually puts Jeff at a really big disadvantage here. Yeah, chat points out that Boost Ball would be a really good incentive to head back to the Far Chosa direction, since that also is pretty close to Life Grove. And Life Grove has itself as two major items in one room. So, for that reason as well, we most likely would see runners try and prioritize that where possible. Because the only thing stopping us from getting to Life Grove right now is actually Boost Ball. Uh, what other places can we go to in Fendrana right this minute without any further, um, items? Uh, Canyon. Canyon's the obvious one. Um, uh, Observatory. 
control tower we know is an artifact, so uh, research core, so that's three checks, three major checks. We can't go to Thardis from the front. We can get there from the back since we have Gravity Suit and Spider Ball, respectively, between our runners. So we can get there via workstation. I think the only major location in Farfindrana is Gravity Chamber, so yeah, I think there's only three major items currently in Logic left in Fendrana, which is Canyon, Observatory, and Research Core. Oh yeah, and also Storage, um, storage Cave, so there's four major items left in Fendrana. Awesome, did you see what item Bash got? Uh, the Sun Chamber Ghost Fight was the artifact. Uh, okay. Yeah. And and uh, our, both of our runners know that the artifact is there since main power bombs were on the flogger fight itself. Does logic require um, thermal visor for Thardis? Yes. Um, which we do have, but. From the front, it also expects you to use super missiles so that you can open up the uh, wave switch, which we also don't have wave beam, so we're missing right. out on that. Oh, is that boost ball? Sure was. Um, did we randomize this? <laughs> I joke, of course. <laughs> Yeah, that could be the incentive Jeff is looking for to head back to Farchozo. But with uh, all the uh, equipment Bash Prime has picked up, uh, his next stop is most definitely Fendrana. I actually just realized, because you can go through the entirety of labs, since um, beams are no longer an issue, to get to Farfendrana as well, uh, Thardis should actually be in play to, uh, with, um, from Bash Prime's perspective from the back. And I think, actually, that is what um, he's thinking. Uh, thinking about maybe just going, uh, just going to Farfendrana now. This could be an early Minds play. Although I don't think that's a good idea until you at least pick up X-Ray Visor, so I would wager this is more likely. Uh, this could be... Actually, no, we can't do Plasma Processing without Boost. Uh, is Anti-Chamber in Logic? Uh, Anti-Chamber should have been fine from Bash's side because there was nothing stopping getting to Farchozo in the first place. Um... Yeah. Correction. We didn't have wave beam. Right, no wave beam. Uh, actually, yeah, that's a very good point. So yeah, Bash actually is technically thermal's technically not in logic yet. Oh, which means Thardis isn't in logic. So yeah, Thardis is out of logic too. Not not saying that he can't still have a major item, but. Let's uh, see how Bash goes about this. One for the health refill at the very least, and is going to far from Drana. Yeah, this is probably the most major dense area you can check at the moment. and plasma beam really pull its weight here in labs. And Bash Prime electing for a spare energy tank in quarantine monitor uh, and is going to fight Thardis. I think I'm okay with this play, because right after this, you can either go to Storage Cave and um, Gravity Chamber now, if you're if you're comfortable with Gravityless um, Chamber Escape. 
Uh, or you can go to, I think I just saw X-Ray Visor in Observatory. Oh, no. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so now Thardis is in play. Now that being said, if Bash Prime commits to the far Fendrana clear, to the full Fendrana clear rather, uh, he will get boost and um, he will get boost in gravity suit. Let's uh, let's see how he chooses to go about this. Jeff, Jeff. is big. Go on. Uh, Jeff is doing uh, one of the few. Um... Uh, sequence breaking tricks that you can still do in trilogy. Indeed. And as a result, gets the uh, control tower artifact. All right, so there's one more major item left in here in research core. I would definitely recommend picking up the expansions as you're passing through Research Lab Bather here, just because it's two really quick expansions. And right now, Jeff is not looking so hot on the energy tank front. Three is doable, not particularly cozy though. And 25 missiles is definitely a little bit on the uh, weaker side. All right, one petty dink later, and Thardis has X-Ray Visor. Ooh, nothing in... Oh, shoot. Research Core. Research Core, thank you. No problem. It's okay, Prime Room names are hard. Um, so yeah, we have Wave, X-Ray, we're basically, well, Jeff needs to also find supers, but we're basically just looking for Phazon suit now. Which at this point is looking like mines. It's very likely it's in mines. If it's, because the only other place in Farfendrana that could have a major item is Storage Cave. Uh, lower gravity chamber is guaranteed an artifact already. The only other place Phazon could be at this point, if not in Fendrana, would be Life Grove or I... Phazon Mines. Right, Life Grove too, because that's going to be in play now, courtesy of uh, Boost Ball. So, in Bash Prime's case, I think what he's going to do here is just a full Fendrana loop here. Pick up the artifact in Gravity Chamber, do Gravity List uh, Chamber Escape which might cost a little bit of time, but we'll see how he pulls it off. Uh, after that, Bash can just route through labs to go to, um, to go to the front of Fendrana and pick up everything there. Jeff finds Wave Buster in Storage Cave. And Bash right next to him. Jeff is going to gain a couple of minutes on Bash here just by uh, virtue of gravity suit and better movement. Ooh, doesn't quite get the energy tank up top. All right, so Bash Prime about to do gravityless, uh, gravityless chamber escape. Let's see how this works.
Ooh, almost made it. Ooh, that was a really good underwater slope jump. So yeah, Bash didn't take too much time at all getting out of Gravity Chamber, and I think that pretty much put confirms Bash being ahead for a while. Yeah, because that's not a particularly easy... Uh, Gravityless Chamber escape is not particularly easy. It is not, and he made it look very easy. Alright, so let's see if Jeff decides to make a quick detour to Thardis here. We do know that this would work out in his favor. I mean, if supers are on OP, then Jeff is going to have to pick up X-Ray anyway. Alright, and Jeff is fighting Thardis. I just love how Plasma Beam yeets the Flying Pirates away so hard. And it's only Plasma Beam. Good thing the pirates and turrets have Stormtrooper aim. Oh, not that guy, though. That's the, uh, that's the door technician. Bash having a little bit of trouble reaching the, uh, there we go. Yep, just cruising past Research Lab Aether. Now, Jeff had, uh, had no issue passing through the first time through Control Tower, but Bash does still have to watch out on the way through here to make sure that he does not hit the trigger for the fight, although... With this equipment, the fight wouldn't take particularly long. It would just be mildly annoying. Alright, that is Bash's fourth artifact, leaving his only two being in storage depot B and uh, chapel. All right, and yeah, like you're seeing Bash jump off the ledge here instead of slide off it, because yeah, if you slide off, limited influence may accidentally kick you into the trigger for the fight. So Jeff, in the meantime, uh, Definitely just triggered his inter intersonic genesis there, getting stuck while rolling on the pathway. So both runners continuing to cruise through for the moment, although with uh, Boost Ball in tow, Jeff... Um, actually, we can't really do Plasma Processing without Spider Ball. Although that might not stop Jeff at the rate, uh, the direction he's going. Eh, 
And yeah, we are gonna see spiderless plasma processing. What are the items on the left side of the tracker to answer question chat? They are charge beams, super missiles, and space jump. And uh, both of our runners, uh, what is that in plasma processing? Not yeah, droid. Jeff is going. Is he gonna go backwards? Base on? Um, going to mines now without Spider Ball is a little rough of a call to make. But at the same time, he really does need to find these super missiles. And Phase on suit, I think we can pretty much already say is down here somewhere, because we've now checked all the major locations in Fendrana, Chozo and Talon, and I'm pretty sure Magmore's cleaned out too now, thanks to plasma processing, so... Still missing Life Grove. Uh, yes, there's Life Grove too. Jeff may... may be going to Upper Mines and bust out at Main Quarry, because <clears throat> Boost Ball would, um, Boost Ball would let him just bar skip skip straight up to Life Grove. Interesting that Jeff Wen checked PCA, because that is not a major item. Unfortunately, Batch gets the bad news that um, there was an easy way to Gravity Chamber. But I think, I think at this point, uh, after Chapel, Batch is probably just going to gun it to Mines and then Life Grove. This is also the other reason why uh, runners typically will RA charge beam starting, because it just breaks most enemies and bosses. Uh, who wants to do ghosts with only the pea shooter lemons? Uh, though I say that, and we did actually see that today. Ooh, that power bomb almost didn't connect completely with uh, Mama Shegoth, but it m it worked out. Alright, Jeff is going straight for Central Dynamo here. And what is that down there in um, Central Dynamo? It is Super Missiles! All right, so at that puddle is 17 squares. 28 squares at that puddle. Ew, this maze is trash. 
like 42 or 40, uh, 41 or 43 squares. <clears throat> Ooh, Bash trying to dodge the uh, Flying Pirates doesn't quite make it all the way across. That Super Missile, though, is a big break for Jeff. Um, he... Back into Sun Tower, or Sun Chamber. Yes, indeed. Although, unfortunately, Jeff has to still make a pit stop in anti uh, not anti chamber to Elder Chamber to pick up Spider Ball. So we're still looking for Phazon Suit. There's only one more major item location left in Lower Mines, which is OP. Jeff is also going to have to pass MQA without Spider Ball. Uh, this is going to require some pretty serious scan dashing. Yeah, ultimately, Bash's decision to go to Far Chozo first has actually really paid off for him in this race. And yet, Jeff just now realizing um, he does not have Spider Ball. Did he not? Oh, no. Yeah, Jeff would have to go back to Elder Chamber to pick that up. But unfortunately, there isn't a particularly clean way to get back there right now. We're going to see that Life Grove play now from Bash Prime. Fairly solid chance this is Phazon Suit. And that will put Bash Prime in go mode at 54.55. And now it's just a quick trip to Upper Mines for Storage Depot B, and that's going to spell the end of the game. So yeah, not a um, little bit of a rude start having to go back and forth a little bit for bombs in, um, for Morph Ball in um, Warrior Shrine, and then bombs in War uh, Warrior Shrine. No, that's not what it was. It was Morph Ball in Warrior Shrine and Bombs in Watery Hall. So, besides that, uh, Seed otherwise, not really too bad. Getting Plasma early was a big deal. Jeff makes the scan dash. At this point, there's only a few things that could be on Omega Pirate, and none of them are useful. Yeah, the only two majors we have left are Ice Spreader and Flamethrower. Unfortunately, Jeff doesn't know that yet. I wonder how he's going to feel if it's Flamethrower. Mm, probably not great. We know this can't be Spider Ball, because uh, logically Spider Ball is expected to get through MQA. Ooh, nice scan dash for Funkle Hall A. And just like that, Bash has picked up Storage Depot B. Blink and you miss it.
Uh, Phazon Mining Tunnel could be a major as well, but it is a Notroid. I forgot about Phazon Mining Tunnel, but yeah, Phazon Mining Tunnel actually irrelevant in a major miner setting uh, today. And with a nice easy save warp, Bash Prime on his way back to Artifact Temple. How is, uh, how's this missile count looking? It looks like it's only 35. Uh, Jeff is also 35, so yeah, not a particularly large amount of ammo to work with here. But with Charge Beam, uh, they shouldn't have to worry too much about final bosses. To answer a question, chat, the Notroids we've seen are Tower Chamber, um, Short Tunnel, Phazon Mining Tunnel. Uh, I think I want to say we've seen two more, but I can't remember where those two were. Life Probe had one. Say, say that last one again? Life Probe had one. Life Probe had one. Research Core was number five. Plasma processing was number six, so we've seen six out of seven. Uh, actually, with Life Grove now being swept, I think OP. Well, either OP is either a Notroid or one of those uh, last two super combos, because I forgot about Storage Depot A and um, and Philip. Those are our last two major locations. No dashes, please. Oh, I opened my big mouth. Ooh, that's a snipe I wasn't expecting. And Ridley immediately responds with a charge. Rude. Logically, though, this seed was a little bit trash, because you did have to take those super missiles all the way back to Ghosts for, um, for, um, Sun Chamber. But yeah, fairly painless Ridley from Bash Prime, and uh, he's going to be on his way to Impact Crater just past the one hour mark. Very, pretty fast seed. Not too much of a hard time climbing the dentist's office here. <laughs> Boy, would I hate to be the dentist that had to examine these teeth. About to see what's on a Mega Pirate. <clears throat> yeah, one in three chance this is a Notroid. And 
and it's the last Notroid. <laughs> and Jeff frowns in disappointment. Jeff's a little unhappy about that one. Alright, so without super missiles or ice spreader, this is not the best equipment for Exo, but Bash making that first subchamber still look pretty painless for now. And uh, has actually just responded in the race time with the words that ellipses is rough. Bash not having too hard of a time nailing uh, nailing his snipes so far here. Nice stun. Alright, so sub-chamber three now for Bash Prime. It's not going too bad so far. Now, Jeff uh, has an interesting scenario here. He has to now do spiderless shafts. So this is a combination of BSJ and standable terrain. I have a feeling it's not in logic. It is not. No, BSJs in general are not in logic. Uh, things that are, like, enabled in beginner difficulty is beginner standable, beginner movement, beginner combat, and beginner knowledge, and stuff along that line, and opening gates from, uh, beginner opening gates from behind. For, like, Research Lab Hydra, for example. All right, subchamber four now, and Exo opens up with plasma, but does go into double speed. You really want to watch out for those plasma balls. I think with the DOT taken into account, that deals like 80 damage. For the record, I did not know you could blow those up with missiles. I don't remember if I knew that either as a kid. Because I think I was like 9 when I first played this, 9 or 10. Did you do GameCube or Trilogy? Uh, GameCube at first at the time, but I also did play through Trilogy in uh, 2019, I want to say. Jeff getting his oh, second to last artifact. Yeah, the one Jeff is missing is on Ghost. And unfortunately, this requires a trip back to Farchoza, which is on the polar opposite end of the world for him right now. You're seeing, though, Jeff uh, do, uh, show some good knowledge of spiderless shafts here. This could come in handy later down the road, although we won't have to worry about this in week six because uh, we'll have Spider Ball enabled by default. Because yeah, folks, week six is the Armory Hunt setting where we have all of our movement and utility items, but we have to go get our beams, missiles, power bombs, and um, uh, comp beam combos. Uh, those are all shuffled. And suits.
thankfully with all visors in tow, this essence fight will be fairly painless for Bash. And Jeff succeeds to get to Elite Research. Alright, Essence being a little uncooperative here. Bash is losing track of the pool here. And decides to just go for it. It is not enough. And now that position in particular right now is pretty bad for Essence. Uh, if Essence roars after this, then it should be safe. Yeah, that's gonna be safe. And Philip is guarding the Ice Spreader. Which means Flamethrower's Vanilla. But with that, Bash Prime finishes with an official race time GG time of 1.08.30 with a, forf a forfeit from Jeff soon after. That concludes our race today. Oh. All right, Jeff, welcome to the booth. Hey, that was gross. I didn't like that. I, I don't blame you. So, um, yeah, because the, uh, the early wild, um, the early wild issue really spelt a lot of trouble. Yeah, I, I knew that I could do it. Uh, it just, I messed it up and I figured, hey, I've got to come back here anyways. Uh, hopefully I'll find spider and super soon uh i think i as soon as it happened and i got I'd, i found once i found wave beam and i found all the beams i knew that was pretty much game over if bash had either found spider or did it early wilds before me because uh yeah that was definitely uh a death sentence pretty early on yeah as it turns out spider ball was in elder chamber uh and bash actually went to far chozo before zoid and mm. bash joins us in the booth gg to you and congratulations GG. I was muted. That's okay. You're not anymore. So, um, yeah, Bash, you took uh, you took a bit of an early death, um, accidental death in Magmore, but you made up with it quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. So I was pretty mad at myself for that. Um, I should have just routed those E tanks in, so I was right next to them, um, in Chozo, but I was like. This is the risk I will take, and then if not, I'll just pivot. Like, if it wasn't more for bombs, I would have just pivoted, um, like, back to that save. But that ended up being the right play. I also could have made the blunder of just, like, that being an artifact, and I hadn't checked. So that's why I checked when I did. Um, and thankfully, that ended up being more fall. But, yeah, that was, uh, I think that might have been the biggest mistake I made this whole, this whole run. Um, I don't know. My game plan was, like, see what Chozo unlocks, because... Like, Thardis was, like, looming, but I didn't have Thermal yet. And I'm like, okay, well, if Thardis isn't open yet, then I'll, like, just stick in Chozo for now. Because um, I found bombs rather late, too. So, like, um, I don't know. Uh, what was, like, the other thing? There was something that was... Oh, no. When I found bombs, I'm like, okay, I'll do reverse Chozo because I have Plasma. And that's probably locking something. Um... That actually was the call that basically split you and Jeff up very early in the race, because that yeah. led you to Spider Ball, and Jeff did not get early wild on his first pass through Flagra. Yeah, so I had was... to go to Sent Dynamo for supers. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh my god, really? Mm -hmm. it was... <laughs> I didn't even look at the credits. Yeah, behind a, uh, uh, oh, behind don't... a 43 square maze, by the way. Also, um, don't forget that when I was on my way there, uh, PMT was a nothing, uh, OP was a nothing, uh, yeah. Elite Research was a nothing, where it was Ice Spreader, um, and that is where I ended up. 
Yeah, the only major we hadn't seen was Storage Depot A, which that basically is Vanilla Flamethrower at this point. Uh, phase on suit was in Life Grove, Jeff. Yeah, I was uh, I was planning on routing that in when I found Boost Ball, and honestly, I think the way I routed would have cleaned up well, um, given the fact that I would have uh, I was on my way up to Life Grove, I could have clean gotten that finished off with uh, Elder Chamber, and then by that time I would have definitely had um, Spider Ball, uh, because I mean the last check I would have had. Uh, was Sun Chamber too, but yeah, by that time I I know that was like me full clearing the game, so I was really yeah, unless Bash did not have Spider or failed early wild, then that was my only hope. But I kept trucking for as long as I could. Uh, but yeah, when I finished and it was I was still a ways off. Uh, yeah, I figured I'd just call her there. <laughs> That's an interesting game mode. I've never, I haven't done major reminders in like a long time, but then also having the open doors so that it's just really, it's just, just the checks left. Um, I realized probably like maybe 20 minutes in that I was like, okay, my movement and just general idea of how I can route, put a game plan together, it was going to basically like save this for me. It just depended on where the checks lied. So. Um, the fact that boost and phase on basically fell on my lap was just absurd. <laughs> um, because I was going to route that. So I needed to get gravity chamber and I needed to get control tower. So that basically, so that necessitated me. I was like, okay, I think it's worth it doing Thardis. I, it's he, like, you know, the guy's in logic now, if that ends up being like wave, then that's fine. Um, it was x-ray, which was like still fine, I guess. Um, what else? Well, okay, I guess I'll, I'm going, I'm Tarantinoing this, but like, yeah, so basically I had just Tower of Light and then Tower Chamber and, um, whatchamacallit, Warrior Shrine. Warrior Shrine, I have been used to having Morph Ball, so I'm like, all right, it's probably going to be there. And it would have paid out like so well if I just didn't die. But what I should have done in, instead of just save warping to the ship was just get the E tanks in main plaza and just go down the elevator and just like, I don't even think it's that much slower to begin with, and that would have that would have eliminated virtually all of the risk of the run that I ran into like that whole time. Um, yeah, I'm. The, uh, go ahead. The um the early game like morph ball to go all the way back for bombs was uh was a little rough, but other than that, the seed the settings in general allowed for the seed to run pretty quick once you yeah. once ice and plasma especially came along. Um, so. I did Lava Lake when I did because there wasn't really a better time for me to route that in since I was already coming um, from that direction, I guess. And I didn't have bombs yet, so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get this now because I'm going to route this into mid Chozo anyways. Um, and I felt that was worth doing and it ended up being that. I was surprised it was Plasma, but then given, let's see here, given, given that led to Spider, which was needed, like... Shocked that supers wasn't well. Okay, I'm shocked and not shocked that supers were in. Uh, central dynamo, like of all places. Um, yeah. By the time you had gone phase on suit and Jeff was starting to dip mines, at pr that point we pretty much deduced that yeah, there can't be any other major items because we've swept the whole rest of the place. Yeah. Um, but, I'm uh, I'm shocked that Zoid worked out. I was like, well, I might as well just full clear Chozo while I'm at it because I have to go to Sun Chamber anyways. Um, so I felt it was worth doing and not orphaning that check. And but it was still a risk, right? And I shocked that that was Ice Beam. Um, so kind of just an extra bonus. I almost for like my plan was to just do Zoid from the beginning, and then I just like muscle memoried and just went past Zoid. So that's why I like turned around when I when I did it. Yeah, Jeff had gone to Zoid a lot earlier. Um, you had instead finished the Far Chozo sweep and came back with Plasma. Beam. Yeah, yeah. At that point, like when I had Plasma, I, it was uh, I felt it was it was faster to just route Z Zoid in that way. So like, um, because at that point I had no reason to like do Zoid earlier, except I guess maybe not have to do. I don't know. I guess I did well. I guess Zoid earlier would have been better because then I would just go to the Stone Toad anyway and do all those checks. So, I don't know. Uh, I guess in hindsight, that if I was, like, knowing I would do Zoid and just clean that up, then I'd be good to go there. Um, 
So that was yeah. ice. So then that was a huge sigh of relief. So I'm like, okay, well, Chozo's done. So I don't never have to come back here for anything. Um, Spider was really nice too. Uh, I would have, if I didn't get Spider, I still would have done Sun Chamber and hope that Flogger was it. But like, I figured it was going to be Ghosts. And then I just do Early Wild. And like Early Wild, like, I don't know. Like I'm not, <laughs> I haven't practiced it in a bit, but it's like, I've done it so much. Like, but it's there's still that like, oh my God, like if I fail this, then... That was my I think thought. I still would have done it. I think I still would have just accepted the time loss and just tried it again because I needed Sun Chamber to be done. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so then at that point, I'm like, okay, I want to basically route in back Fendrana, and then I decided to be thorough with Thardis because at that point, I had Spider, I had Plasma, I had Varia. Um, so, like, I think, I think Thardis was just fully in logic at that point. So I'm like... This works, and then I can choose whether I want to do front Fendrana first. But then I'm like, wait, I have two artifacts in back Chozo and Labs. So reverse, so doing that in reverse was just the right call. Um, and then that routing it. into Vanilla Boost was just ridiculous. Yeah, Vanilla Boost, Boost was kind of funny. Mines. I was like prepped to do like, I had the back of my mind like, okay, like Life Grove, I might have to just go for. Um, I might have to just go for the boostless strat in case that ends up being phase on. But then thankfully, thankfully I routed in um, boost that way. I think if I hadn't, maybe what I would have done is I would have gone through the south elevator back to Magmore and then go into mines that way. And then route in the artifact, do Ridley, get the hint just to see if it was either in, you know, if it was in fact Life Grove or if it was magmore or just mines don't um, don't don't talk to me about uh boostless life growth please oh, i'm sorry week. <laughs> that's terrible i hate doing it yeah um i uh i have a couple of questions for both of you we're coming up on the end of swiss and uh there is still um potential for folks in the four two range to reach brackets so jeff what are your thoughts going into well actually for both of you just in case we do cross that bridge but what are your thoughts going into week six here i uh, i am afraid of going against uh anyone who's got good room to room movement we're gonna start with all of our movement uh, upgrades in uh was it a, uh armory hunt and people that uh can move quickly uh, are going to have a real big advantage. Uh, that said, going in, I've already met my expectations uh, and surpassed a lot of expectations for myself. So I'm going in uh, hoping to win, but still casual and still uh, just happy to be here. Very nice. Um, so I haven't really been practicing for this tournament. I was actually kind of hesitant on um, participating um but i realized that i needed to be in the mindset where i just i'm not going to give up and i'm just going to do the best i can and just try to, and really i want to have fun with it and um you know i wish i would have beaten nai but this tournament is very very the playing field is a lot more even um i think all the skill floor has gone up considerably um in the past year or even past two years, because I haven't competed in since like what 2020 um, or 2021. It's hard to remember. Um, so for me to still be four, so for me to get to four one at this stage, um, I'm I'm very pleased. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make top eight. Um, I for me that matters less than just personally how I've been playing in the, each of these games and. Uh, well, I had some shakiness in the door rando round. Um, I'm pleased that I was still able to like move fast enough and like at least try to route things in and have a game plan. Um, Cause like my first two weeks were like the most shaky. It was just, I was like, okay, like kind of downing my abilities here, but then um, uh, th yesterday's race for week four against Robo Scout. Um, despite even some shakiness in the beginning and then uh, I don't know, just bringing it back and putting it together at the end. Um, and then this race, I'm 
I don't know, I'm very happy with myself. These are probably the two highlight races for me, personally. So, um, but if I lose next round, I lose. If I, uh, you know, if I win, I win. Like, for me, it's just a matter of, am I pleased with how I played? And uh, I think overall, I can say yes. It's a good spirit. Especially since, like, I've wanted to keep my expectations low since I haven't, I haven't been, like, doing practice seeds or practicing really all that much. All right. Well, with that said, folks, uh, we are going to be wrapping it up today. Our next series of matches, unless something crops up short notice, we've got three matches scheduled for Wednesday evening. At 6 p.m., we've got Avina versus Link, 64912. Uh, that will be a random start, uh, random starting location with extra items and possibly one-way elevators. I thought that wasn't... Um, I, th I didn't think we were going to see that, but... It's bold. It's Indeed. great. It doesn't, it doesn't mess with the preset itself. Or That's the, true. The, th the theme of the week. But yeah, it's, it'll definitely be one of the more interesting races this week. And then at 8 p.m., we've actually got a double, I, I'd say a double header, but more like two races back uh, at the same time. We've got Schwartz Gandhi versus Off 82 uh, and Digglerath versus Cosmonaut, both at 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening. Both Spring Ball start with Charge Seeds. And then the next set of races will be beyond that. We are going to stay on version 5.8. We did get up the upgrade to 6.0 today, but it came after the start of the week. So we're going to stick with 5.8 for now. I think we're moving to 6 for week 6, if not the brackets. On that note, I need to get that set up so I can go do some Echo's Door Rando. <laughs> it's... Is it a... Uh... It might still be in the dev builds only. I don't know if it was no, made it's... stable. It's made stable. Oh! Oh, that's cool. Okay. Very cool. I'm, I'm behind the times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just came hot off the press a couple hours. Uh, yeah. A few minutes after the race started. But mm -hmm. with that said, folks, uh, again, follow our runners, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Gaines and Games and Bash Prime for their amazing performance this uh, this afternoon. Uh, thank you to our uh, trackers, Pierre Roulette and Op82, for their help pressing all the buttons, making sure everybody knew how, knows who has what. And Torvis Bog, thanks for jumping in today and joining me here in the booth. Super fun. Thank you. And with that said, folks, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next mission. Take care. <laughs>